hi everyone hope you are doing good welcome to the next video on my youtube channel my name is Saurabh Bharti, microsoft dynamics 365 professional this is the platform where i come and share my knowledge and experience with you all so without further delay let's talk about the today's topic so today's topic is the next part uh, in the inventory valuation series which we have been uh, speaking about uh, if you have not visited my uh, uh, supply chain inventory valuation series i am going to put the link in the description box please go through that till now we have covered the four valuation methods the inventory uh, valuation method which are weighted average weighted average by date fifo lifo and this is the fifth uh, valuation method which we are going to talk about uh, in today's video which is moving average so without further delay let's start the today's topic if you talk about the what is the moving average uh, moving average is a perpetual costing method so the moving average is based on the average principle where the cost on inventory issues uh, do not change when the purchase cost uh, does okay so which means if you have issued the inventory uh, uh, inventory at a specific cost and later on if there is a due to some reason if the cost is getting changed updated for that quantity my cost of issue will not get updated whereas it will get posted into a, a separate expense account when you use moving average inventory settlements and inventory marking are not supported and inventory close also do not affect uh, get affected for the products which are using the moving average so that is the basic uh, i mean the key principle or the key highlights if you are using the uh, uh, in moving average as a valuation method uh, if you talk about some additional configuration so we have to set up two different uh, main account for this one is the price difference for moving average and this account is required to post the differential cost like if my inventory is already issued and later on if my purchase cost of or the cost for that product is getting updated so the differential will get posted to this account and uh, you also have to specify the next uh, uh, account which is a cost revaluation account for the moving average and this is required uh, similar to the recalculation or the adjustment which we have for other valuation methods uh, so if you would like to uh, do the adjustment for the moving average at a specific unit price and when you run that process you are going to post the differential or the adjustment in this account we're going to talk about this process in the in the future videos so uh, without further delay, let's see the demo but before we move to the demo as we have been doing uh, till now uh, let's uh, see the one example let's prepare one example in excel spreadsheet and then see that how that uh, example is going to reflect it in the system okay so this is my example which is for the weighted average uh, uh, sorry moving average which we have uh, so considering one there i have a purchase order which is on 27th of uh, january i have done the product receipt for uh, this particular purchase order with the two quantity with the total value of uh, 200 which is me which means 100 each now let's say before i receive the purchase invoice for this purchase order i have uh, done the issue of this or sales of this particular product of one quantity and now at this moment my average cost is 100 so this is going to take the 100 as a cost price for this but now let's assume when we do the purchase invoice and that can be let's say on the next day or whenever you receive your invoice so system is going to post the financial accounting entry and the update the valuation method and let's say at the time of invoice if my value has been updated to 120 then the 100 so in the inventory system is going to post the 220 as a value not to 40. why the 20 uh, which is the portion of the quantity which has been already issued it will be posted as an expense not as an inventory so which means if i talk about these two quantities the first quantity which is already issued the value for that is not going to be updated whereas the portion of that is going to be posted into the expense account and the value for the remaining quantities will be updated in the inventory now so if i see the accounting entry for this what is expected so the expected accounting entry is that I'm going to 
uh, credit my supplier by 240 the inventory will be 220 and then there will be price difference for uh, moving average posting which we just now discussed about the main account will get debited to this one okay now let's see this uh, how it is going to uh, reflect in our uh, uh, in our system in microsoft dynamics so if you see on my screen i have uh, one product which is item for the moving average now if i open this and if i see the valuation met uh, the item model group for this uh, this is having a, a, a item model group which is associated which has the moving average as the valuation method defined one of the thing which you will observe here since the uh, in the moving average the cost gets posted based on your the price which you define on the purchase order so you do not have the option of uh, editing this uh, include physical value or, or this field is not relevant for this particular uh, valuation method now for this what i have done is uh, i have created a purchase order which we have seen in the excel spreadsheet so this is my purchase order for this two quantity 100 is total 200 and i have done the product receipt for uh, this particular uh, uh, purchase order but before i move to this let me also show the place where you need to uh, configure uh, uh, the additional main account in the posting profile so you need to go to inventory and then you have this uh, posting options and this you need to define uh, 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 i mean the additional account uh, uh, needs to be defined for you uh, is under the inventory tab price uh, difference for the moving average and the cost revaluation for the moving average okay so hope that's clear now let's do one thing uh, let's move to the example which we have so what i have done is that i have created a, a purchase order and i have received this and now i have one sales order which i have uh, created for this particular product and what we will do is that we will sell one quantity uh, against uh, the same product and uh, we will see that how it is going to reflect and parallelly what we will do we will also open the transaction inquiry screen uh, just to see that how these transactions are going to be uh, reflected for us so what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy this account and i'm going to filter this on my transaction screen just to view my transactions here So now if you see, I have the transactions here. So one is the receipt, which I have done and minus one, the cost amount is not updated here against the receipt because it's still, it is a physical receipt. Uh, invoicing is pending for this. Now let's go ahead and post the invoice for this one sales order. And let's see what is the cost it is going to take. So I'm going to directly generate the invoice for this and post it. So I have posted the invoice for this and I can go to my inventory transaction and let's see what is the cost amount it considers. So if I res refresh my screen, if you see against the sales order, it has taken the 100 as a price, which is right because at this moment, my average cost is this. But what I'm going to do is that I'm going to uh, go back to my purchase order and I'm going to create the invoice for this purchase order but at the time of invoicing for these two quantities, I'm going to update the unit price from 100 to 120 and see that how it is going to impact. So I'm going to just enter some amount here. So uh, invoice number this and before this, let me do one thing. I will just delete this and I'm going to change my session date and just try to do this on the next day of the uh, 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 of the uh, product receipt date okay so I'm going to go back to my home page and I'm going to consider that I if if this invoice is going to happen at uh, 28th so I'm going to say yes here and I'm going back to my purchase order which I have created and i'm going to uh, look for the order which we have created which was the order number 27 127 and i'm going to invoice this order now so 
so let's click on the invoice enter some invoice number some description the invoice date it can be anything now what i'm going to do is that i'm going to update this the price now you might say that why this unit price being updated it can be because of any of the reason it is maybe additional freight price being updated or any 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 reason maybe the deviation in the price agreement with the supplier and the actual invoice which has been submitted okay so i'll update this price so now it has 2240 i will update the matching status just do this if you have a two-way three-way matching prop placed here you need to justify or get this approved based on your process which has been configured so what i'm going to do is that i'm going to just post this uh, uh, particular uh, uh, transactions here and then we will see that how the financial posting is done for this so i'm going to click on this invoice and as per our example the 20 should be posted in a in a different vouchers so i think the vouchers are set up in a bad job so i'm going to just transfer this uh, uh, manually from my journal ledger the vouchers which are not yet transferred so i'm going to transfer this now okay and now let's refresh this and now let's see the impact now if you observe here so there is one uh, this 200 is the reversal of the product receipt which we have posted if you understand the inventory accounting or the financial posting but let's stick to this so 240 has been posted to our vendor balance the 220 has gone to my cost of material invoiced which is the inventory value and the 20 has gone to this price difference for moving average account okay so as we discussed so now if i go back to the inventory transaction similarly this is going to be reflected here so my inventory cost now is not 240 it is 220 which is uh, which is based on the 100 which has been issued before the price which has been changed at the time of purchase invoice so that's how your uh, the moving average uh, valuation method works uh, now let's move back to our uh, powerpoint and let's see uh, what else we have so uh, uh, addition to this moving average uh, what is there is the conversion more uh, costing method so there is an option in microsoft dynamics 365 that at the end of the year you have an option of changing your valuation method so you can change your inventory costing method from costing method that is based on the average cost or the standard cost to a method uh, based on the moving average uh, but if you have to change that you have to have these uh, make the adjustment to get the quantity and value zero uh, and after this is made uh, then go and change the uh, move, uh, item model group and make the adjustment to get the quantity and value back into the inventory but there is a caveat to that uh, you cannot change the inventory costing method from a, uh, from the from a moving average method to FIFO, LIFO or weighted average method okay so uh, that's it about uh, this particular video hope you are able to understand and grasp the basic concept of the moving average how it works in microsoft dynamics 365 and uh, it will help you further in understanding the valuation method uh, in a better way okay so that's it for this video uh, thank you for watching and see you in the next one thank you